best way for them to start getting more followers, get some virality? What What are the things that worked for you? Get your profile set up and then immediately start networking with people. Then from there, the content becomes more of an important factor because the thing with, with X is you just can't bullshit people. You would suggest that maybe he targets top people that his clients would be following. And I have post notifications set up and I respond quick to one of his tweets. I'm going to get a ton of impressions because I'm the first person that's like underneath his tweet, right? Yeah, that's like funnel hacker mindset right there. <laughs> So if you had to, if somebody's just getting started, let's say that they're on, you know, Instagram, they're on Facebook, they're doing all this stuff. What would you suggest that they do? Maybe let's, let's go back to Twitter. Like how would they start? Maybe they don't have an account or maybe they haven't done anything. What's the best way for them to start getting more followers, get some virality? What, what, what are the things that worked for you? What would you suggest? Right. So if you're, you know, you're going in at solo dolo, um, you know, you need to start the account, set up the profile. Um, I always say like who you are, what you've done, what you've accomplished, your bio should handle that nice picture, uh, et cetera, get your profile set up and then immediately start networking with people um, in your niche, follow them, reply to their tweets, you know, DM a couple of them. Um, I highly recommend jumping on some spaces. That's how you're really going to get those first few hundred followers. Then from there, the content becomes more of an important factor uh, because then you'll have actual followers who are going to care about what you post. Uh, and you know, by the nature of the algorithm, it's not at a healthy spot like TikTok where you can come in with zero followers, post and get traction. Um, you know, maybe you'd have to get very lucky. It's possible, but it's it's not something I'd rely on as from a business perspective who's investing resources. Um, so that's your playbook for the first few hundred. Then you can start posting content in conjunction with that. And that's how you're going to slowly get engagement and traction um, and start to get virality. So we, we, we talked a little bit about the difference between LinkedIn and Twitter, but is there different content that goes from Facebook and Instagram than what, how you'd post on Twitter? And then Ben, I know you had a question too. So jump in there. Right. So Instagram, uh, you know, when you're doing those short form videos, there's some differences and some similarities. If you're going to be doing, you know, talking head videos or something like that, that will fit on, on Twitter and LinkedIn. Both platforms have immersive swiping like TikTok. So you can just swipe to the next one. Um, but you know, I know Instagram, a lot of times have these loop videos, uh, with text on screen. Those don't really perform on Twitter. Now I'm just getting super practical. That's like a small thing. Um, in terms of long form video, however, like YouTube that can go directly on Twitter and it performs well. Um, the algorithm rewards time on platform time on the post. So those longer form mm. videos do do really well. Um, and I know they're adding, they're looking at adding uh, a video tab and again, the XTV app. So I recommend repurposing any good talking head explainer, how to, or long form video on there. Um, and then in terms of like Facebook, the posts, you could put those directly on there for the most part. Um, if it's good content, it's ultimately good for Twitter. Yeah. Back to your, cause you had a great answer to Chris's question around what can they do to start gaining traction on the Twitter platform? And let's drill in on a specific. And I, the first bird that comes to my mind is our friend, Joel, who we just interviewed before you and I, we, we the three of us hopped on here and he's in the men's coaching space, uh, specifically, um, targeting married men who are professionals that, you know, are, how would you, how else would you phrase that? Chris trying to be better yeah, he's professionals, to, better husbands, yeah, exactly. yeah. husbands, fathers. Yeah. Yeah. Just men's coaching. So if he is starting on Twitter for the first time, you would suggest that maybe he targets uh, top people that his clients would be following uh, set post notifications so that he's responding to tweets in a timely manner. Cause essentially like if I'm following, I'm a huge football person like Adam Schefter on Twitter or something like that. And I have post notifications set up and I respond quick to one of his tweets, I'm going to get a ton of impressions because I'm the first person that's like underneath his tweet. Right. Would you suggest, is that what you mean by, um, yeah. I think I described that correctly. Yeah. That's like, that's, that's some good, that's like a funnel hacker mindset right there. That is absolutely <laughs> a great tip. I personally, yeah, we're getting, yeah. we're getting super practical. I'm even subscribed. I pay five bucks a month to subscribe to people like Mr. Beast and Elon Musk. So that if I do, I end up having his post notifications on. So sometimes when I'm just scrolling and I see oh, Elon Musk tweet, if there's something I can think of that's either clever or adds value, I'll, I'll tweet it right away. Cause I'm going straight to the top. One, if you're premium, uh, if you pay for like the verification, you're going already, you're getting reply priority. Two, if you're a subscriber to that person, you get a maximum reply. 
priority. And yes, you're going to get a bunch of free impressions like that. I've had some Elon Musk replies that have gotten, you know, hundreds of likes and stuff like that. So uh, that is great. Um, I definitely recommend that for, yes, for like, for example, him, that it's a huge niche on X. So um, I can already think off the top of my head, guys like Savior Sons, um, who is one of the biggest uh, kind of men's coaching, father coaching. There was, I think they had a company called like Father Eyes. He has 500, 600,000 followers. Um, so that's a person he would, he should yeah. be engaging with, joining his spaces, replying to his stuff and publishing content in his niche so that when he gets that reply priority, um, you know, he gets 5,000, 6,000 views on his reply. People are clicking his uh, his profile. Maybe it's a one or uh, one or 5% conversion. You're getting 50 to 100 profile views on just that one reply. And now people are coming to your profile. If they see content, they see a good profile and you're putting out stuff they want, you're going to get some followers and it just keeps compounding that way. Same thing with spaces. You come onto these, for those who don't know, spaces is essentially clubhouse. Uh, it's just talking to each other live. Um, so you join these live spaces, you get up on stage to talk and you start talking. And if you're saying good stuff, people are going to follow you. So uh, it's the same. Those are two, probably the two most effective and the two most no follower friendly growth hacks. Um, content, is retweeting is retweeting still a thing? Retweeting is re, it's reposting now. Let's not get <laughs> Posting. political. Yep. I'm <laughs> the old suite. guy in the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an yeah. X suite. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Reposting reposting is still a thing. If you can get reposted by some of these accounts, that is a great way to get traction. Um, obviously, you'd have to you know earn that repost. Well, you know, practical tip since we're we're getting into the funnel hacking. When I started, I would uh, I would mention some of these. Um, I call them the dream 50, the dream 100 is what like a lot of people call it. It's essentially sure. the 50 to hundred accounts that you want to be like, or that are, you know, at the top of your niche, I would start mentioning these accounts and writing threads about them and stuff like that. Uh, and you know, the occasional time they'll see the thread and think it's cool to retweet it, you know, cause it puts them on a pedestal. Mm. So that's another great way to get a, a great way to get retweeted by these accounts or get noticed by these accounts. Cause you know, one retweet, from one of these, like for example, for Joel, one retweet from Save Your Sons on a really good post could change his life. Um, yeah, you know, it could, you know, he'll get a million if he gets millions of views on that. I mean, he's it's lift off. So, re, re, reposting is still very powerful, or quoting, or even replying. You're gonna get boosted on any of that. Dude, that's sweet. Hey, you know, like people that are looking to get started, using those two things to start to grow their brand, and um, really from there, I mean, it's kind of left off but again it's it's all you know the content and it's the water cooler of the world right entering the conversation and being where people are so i yeah uh, with yeah with these platforms that are you know a little bit quote unquote newer i sometimes my youtube commenters yell at me when i say it's new but i'm, I'm talking about x not twitter um, but for these yeah. newer plat for these newer platforms you know a lot of times it's not as cut and dry as you know a two billion three billion user platform like tiktok instagram where it's just make your profile post reels go viral. It's not like that with these newer platforms. If you want to get the benefit of being early, you kind of have to get into these like funnel hacker mindset. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's risk reward. Um, you know, you play the game with these, with these newer platforms, but you can, you know, the reward is massive, you know, and it's different than like a TikTok where you're only as good as your next, your next TikTok, right? right. <laughs> because the thing with, with X is you just can't, you can't bullshit people. Like you have to have stories to tell, expertise to to tell. I I uh I separate our content pillars into five. I call it the pesto pillars. It's kind of my thing. Um, it's it's personal expertise, social proof, trending, and opinions. If you don't have good personal stories, good expertise, good testimonials, or social proof, or things you've done in your life, uh, or good opinions, you really can't fake it, right? So uh, you give me someone that's super boring. So if you're boring, stay away. If you're interesting, We're on Instagram, you could yeah. post reels that say, I'm rich, learn how I got all this. Right. When you're not giving any context. It's not, and people right. grow their accounts, dude. We've talked oh, yeah. to them. It's crazy. It is so hard, if not impossible, to fake it till you make it on Twitter. You will get destroyed. I yeah. Mean, it's like <laughs> the culture, the culture. I love that though. Yeah, the culture of Twitter is just transparency ratio. Like you're gonna get if you if you get you know if they get a sniff that you're faking it or you're you know you're trying to be successful without actually providing any value or you're or you're lying. Some of these big accounts will destroy your whole career. Like you can't fake it on <laughs> X. It's awesome. I love yeah. it, and that's that's probably why a lot of people hate it. <laughs> but that's why we, I love. We need it. more of that, man, because people take a lot of stuff at face value and they fall into some of these traps of people who maybe, you know, don't actually know what they're talking about and they just jump in and start going. So I, I appreciate it. I, I actually think that's a big, big issue. 
um, in our space, right? Is the guru space, the expert space, people are getting wise to it if they really yeah. aren't. So if, if Twitter is yeah. the best place to do that, man, like you're, I'm yeah, all in. You know, you know, you're, you haven't really made it until you've gotten kind of reamed out by the community, at least a couple of times. Like <laughs> everyone I know, including myself has posted some sort of tweet. That's it's nothing wrong with the tweet, but somebody didn't like it. And you'll just get, you know, joke memed on clowns. Like you're getting, give me an example, laughing. give me an example, man. Uh, oh, okay. I had one. I have one that was like maybe a few months ago where essentially I, I was doing a trip around Europe and I had went to uh, Poland and my operations manager lives in Poland. And um, I posted a picture and I was like, so grateful for her. Uh, you know, she crushed it. We're going to blow it up, whatever. People were crushing me. Like I was just getting, everyone was laughing at me. They were like, you flew out for a girl. Like you did all that for your VA, like all sorts of stuff. And it was just like funny because I didn't do anything wrong. But, you know, the interesting part about it was I got a lot of followers from executives who, you know, actually understand that it's a great thing that I did. And it was pretty cool. And it, it added a lot of authority and legitimacy. Um, so I got a lot of, you know, a lot of people were making fun of me that were not my ideal audience, but a lot of founders and executives, like literally a couple hundred founders and executives followed me from that post. So that was kind of a, uh, a rite of passage. But I mean, if you see every guru has been uh, destroyed by like the regular populace on Twitter. It's, it's kind of inevitable, you know, in the business space when you're an entrepreneur that you get uh, memed. 